Minecraft's Impossible World Explained! Dear I'm Mojo. excited. Hi, it's me! Austin! Old school intro, Minecraft video on an old school topic with gravitational constants, simple formulas, and a little bit of me going insane. Oh boy! Just <laughs> what the doctor ordered! Jesus. So. Hi, hello. Today we're answering a question that nobody asked, which is, is the world of Minecraft even possible? Now, we've flirted with various aspects of this question in some way or another over the years, while talking about the day-night cycle, whether or not it's a flat planet, and something else, I'm sure, as well. We talk about the Minecraft world a whole heck of a lot here, and we're gonna talk about it again today. This Let's time, go, we're gonna Minecraft. look at it holistically to to determine the answer to this question. Could a planet with the qualities of the Minecraft world even possibly exist? Okay, so I think- I'm gonna say yes. What do you guys think? It's really important that we talk about what the precise question is that we're trying to answer here because it sounds kind of vague at a glance and maybe even kind of easy to answer, but uh, it's a little bit trickier than you might imagine. I'm very curious, honestly. I, I feel like it, it seems simple, but like he said, there's got to be something more a complex. A given Minecraft world is a specific size. I mean, for gameplay purposes, it's effectively infinite, but it technically isn't, and we will get to that part. For another, the second Cliffs and Caves update changed a lot about how the Minecraft world works. We will get to that part as well. Actually, it's because of the Cliffs and Caves update that I now feel like I have to put a version number in all all of my videos now because this update rendered at least a few of my old videos completely out of date. Maybe oh. I should remake them now. It'd be pretty easy. Just find an old spreadsheet, update the numbers, and it, it's, uh, hey, Austin, stay on target. T <laughs> Imagine doing all that. I, I guess I don't have to react to those vids Anya, now if they're wrong. Could you please <laughs> put a little uh, 1.19 somewhere? Okay, so basically what we want to know is given the size of the Minecraft world and its mass and material makeup, could a planet identical to Minecraft exist in real life? So first of all, let's lead with our assumptions. The first and most important assumption is that the Minecraft world is a sphere or a ball if we're being totally topologically specific. Not that any of you are topologists. Are you? Uh, Why would it be a sphere though? Think about it, everything's a block. Wouldn't it be a block shape? <laughs> I mean. Throw this video a like if you're a topologist. It'll make me feel good and maybe it can distract you from the absolutely bonkers field of mathematics you've chosen to specialize in. Where was I? Oh, right, balls. <laughs> It actually made yeah. me laugh. I, I put laugh in the script and it actually made me giggle. Uh. I am an actual child. Uh, anyway, we're assuming that the Minecraft world is a planet planet. If that bothers you, I don't know, watch the like three videos we've done on it. Minecraft is not flat. Okay, well, does that mean it's not a square? Because I guess squares are technically flat, but like... I don't know. Anyways, he's proved it, I guess. Something. Assumption two is not technically an assumption, but I feel like I have to bring it up every time I do a video talking about the size of the Minecraft world, and that's that the world in each Minecraft game has a limited size. This can be a bit confusing because the Perlin noise generation functions do technically still run for quite a ways out from the world boundary, but you can't actually interact with any of the blocks beyond a certain point past the boundary, and getting past it requires glitches and bugs so uh, wait can you at is there actually a boundary i thought it was endless effectively this world what? barrier is the size limit of the minecraft world you've probably never reached it legitimately because it is really really far from the in-game spawn point like Whoa. no joke if you had everything working for you and you used speed two splash potions on the game's fastest horse to boost its speed up to 19.922 blocks per second and nothing was in your way and you got Galloped straight there at the eight times distance multiplier you would get if you were galloping in the nether, it would still take you 188.2 thousand seconds to reach the overworld game boundary of 29.9 mil. 
Why did he measure that in seconds? I need to know in hours in or That's days. That's over two or... straight days of oh. running. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> two days. In one direction and Whoa. playing precisely no other parts of the game. There's probably a faster way to do it with ender pearls or something, but that should just give you a sense of just how big the Minecraft Jeez. overworld actually is. This world boundary is 29,999,984 blocks away from the center of the map Jeez. in each of the cardinal directions oh meaning looking from the top down the world of minecraft has a surface area just shy of 3.6 quadrillion square meters this is wait how is it a circle then because wouldn't you go in a loop if it's a if it's a planet shape isn't that proof that it's flat it's i don't humongous. even that's not even what the video is about but still you know what i mean like doesn't that prove it's flat if there's an end and like, while i don't like to make bold claims i feel pretty confident that no single human being is capable See? of exploring every single square meter of an entire minecraft world it is just too big that said, while this is pretty huge, it's not impossibly big. Knowing how big the map is, however, is only the first step in determining whether or not the world of Minecraft adequately follows the laws of physics. Bro, he, does he have dandruff in his hair? You guys see that? <laughs> Is that like an edit? Like, to the degree that we could that? label the planet plausible. The next thing I wanted to do was to determine the mass of the Minecraft planet. You see, there are possible issues that could arise from the planet being too small and having too high of a mass. There is a limit to how dense a planet can actually be due to density pressure factors and all that stuff. Now, originally, I was going to try to use the Cliffs and Caves updates, increase depths and heights to estimate the mass of the Minecraft world using these dimensions, but I realized that this actually doesn't matter for our purposes. One of the issues is that, yeah, while the game doesn't load anything beyond bedrock, it's called bedrock. This implies that there's some stuff underneath it. You just personally lack the ability to dig past it for whatever. Whoa, I didn't know that. Just because we can't see anything past bedrock legitimately doesn't mean there's not more stuff down there technically. So yeah, using a playable region of Minecraft for mass determining purposes is a mistake, but not all is lost. Because as I said, there is a better way to do this and it all starts with a little thing gravity. that I like to call gravity. Whoa! That was cool. I like that edit. <laughs> Believe it or not, if we can figure out the gravity of the Minecraft world, we can easily figure out if the Minecraft world is a plausible place or not. We've calculated the gravity of Minecraft several times through the history of these videos using a lot of methods. The basic one is to just measure how long it takes for you to fall a certain distance and use this formula to determine the average acceleration you experience. In our last video, using 100 blocks, we determined gravity in Minecraft to be approximately 27 meters per second per second. Wow, that's insane that he figured Instead, that out. Instead, let's try another way. You see, certain blocks follow the laws of gravity too, like sand, gravel, activated TNT. Let's uh, instead this time use sand. Dropping it from 50 blocks up and timing how long it takes to land, I'm getting, uh, what the heck? 15 meters per second per second? Are you kidding me? No, that can't mm. be right. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. No, let's try the 100 blocks this time like we did in the last video. 14, what the heck is going on? Well, okay, there's a few things going on here. Our calculations in the past have been a little uh, fast and loose, if I'm being honest with you, because Minecraft, like most video games and, you know, reality, has something called terminal velocity, which is what occurs when you're falling through an atmosphere. As you fall, the air exerts a force on your body as you push it out of the way with, um, you know, you! As you fall faster, this force increases until it matches the force of gravity and you stop speeding up entirely. 100 blocks in Minecraft is probably well after the point where you experience terminal velocity, which is why we're getting 15 meters per second per second with gravel and sand at 50 blocks, but 14 at 100, so our number- Sure, whatever he just said, I agree with. Numbers in the past have- It's, it's getting a little too numbery for me, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> ...been a little off. But likely not in a way that's big enough to make much of a difference in the outcomes of those videos. If nothing else, the gravity should be higher than what we've been calculating, making any horrible outcomes that much more dramatic. The real mystery is, why are blocks that are impacted by gravity falling slower than I am as a player? Well, it turns out that blocks that are impacted by gravity have a much lower amount of gravitational pull applied to them. I I don't know why. Maybe uh it's uh, it's lighter. It, 
I guess. They're hollow or something. Anyway, it doesn't matter. We're going to yeah. keep using players because that's how we do it around here. Measuring more closely, looking for the point where I stop speeding up, I measured a force of gravity to be about 30 meters per second squared. Then I decided to just stop goofing off and I looked it up and apparently the official value is 32 meters per second per second for entities like the player and mobs. That's pretty high. That's over 3.5 times the gravity of Earth and that's actually higher than the surface gravity of Jupiter, which is 24-ish meters per second squared. Okay, so why did we need to know the gravity of the Minecraft world anyway? Well, it's easy because we can use this formula here to reverse engineer the mass of the planet if we know the gravity. Well, okay, not quite. See, our gravity, 32 meters per second squared, goes here, the little g. The big g is the gravitational constant. Explaining what that is is very simple. It's the empirical- oh, I dropped out of math, man. This is too much math for me, bro. Just tell me if the world the physical works. constant that are I'm just kidding. He's trying to explain it. I'm, I'm trolling. I'm trolling. the proportionality connecting the gravitational force between two bodies with the product of their masses and <laughs> the inverse square of their distance. Okay, yeah, yeah I did just read that off the Wikipedia article. <laughs> Albert Einstein. In dumb Austin words, it's a number with which we use to describe how gravity works, and it shows up in a bunch of gravity-related equations, including this one. It is a pretty tiny number, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. It's a really tiny number. Excel thinks it's a zero. Anyway, we want that one, and we can use basic algebra to turn the formula around to solve for m the mass of any given orbital body. Technically, we need to put our mass in there too, but it's so insignificant as to be totally pointless to include. So this is our new formula and there is a missing piece. It's this little, um, this, um, hook shaped letter, little, little shepherd's crook. You know, th this, this letter right here, I want to, I want to, it's a, it's a, it's a hook let, it's a hook letter. Oh, no, it's 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 an R, apparently. Well, okay, yeah, yeah that makes sense because it's what? kind of like a, a pirate's hook. Arr. Anyway, this- What? What? Was that an inside joke? I didn't get that. R stands for radius, which is the other piece of the puzzle we need to determine what a Minecraft planet looks like. So, yeah, let's do it. We actually have all the information we need already, believe it or not. It's actually five paragraphs back in the script. The surface area of the Minecraft world. Bam! Chekhov's gun, baby. Except instead of a gun, it's numbers! With the <laughs> 3.6 quadrillion square meter figure we got earlier, we can use this sexy formula for the surface area of a sphere to determine in the radius of our planet and rearranging it in this way and plugging in the area right here we get a radius of 16.9 million meters that is a lot of that's, meters that's a number the distance from the surface of the earth to our core for example is only 6.3 million meters it's not unbelievably huge however this puts our minecraft planet at approximately 68 percent the radius of neptune meaning that it's slightly smaller than that that's far a size away planets. This leads to some <laughs> concerns, however. We have a planet with a surface gravity higher than Jupiter's, but like, uh, Jupiter is 70 times larger Whoa. than it is. This means that our planet is impossible, right? Well... Well... No. Let's just hold on to our horses, everybody, because we're skipping ahead. Remember why we figured out how large the planet is to begin with. We want to know the mass. Without knowing the mass of a Minecraft world, we can't possibly know know how plausible it is on an astrological scale. So, <laughs> astronomical scale. <laughs> how, is it feasible if you're a Capricorn, red moon rising, digging? I don't know. I'm, I was born in December 27th, 1987, around midnight. You can do my chart for me, all right? How plausible- Oh God, don't, nobody do that. No, no I hate that stuff. Well, <laughs> is it on an astronomical scale. So taking our radius and plopping it in our formula, we can hit enter and finally figure out how massive our planet is. 137 septillion kilograms. This is about 34% more massive than Neptune, our closest comparison planet. Then we want to figure out the average density. And uh, how do we do that? Well, it's easy. We divide the mass we just got by the volume of the Minecraft planet, which we get using the volume of a sphere formula, right? Right here, four thirds times pi times r cubed to get us this humongous number. Dividing Another them, we number. get 6,762 kilograms per cubic meter of average planet density. That is, uh, that's plausible. That's 100% plausible. It's 
So is it a planet? Is it, is it possible? It's actually denser than any of the other planets in our solar system, but not by a lot. Realistically, what it means is that there's a lot more heavy metals in the crust and core of Minecraft than we have. That makes sense. ...have anywhere else in our solar system, which, you know, kind of checks out. I mean, wow. there's tons of rare metals scattered all over the place in Minecraft. You know, this is way, way less dense than some of the densest materials known to man. It's about as dense as the metal antimony, something I did not know existed until just today. Sounds like and someone's name. And it's way less dense than, say, osmium, with its 22.5 thousand kilograms per cubic meter. And heck, for bonus points, let's see if this makes sense for how we experience Minecraft, and spoiler, it totally does. This explains why you can only dig down so far before you hit rock that's so dense that you can't get past it, since gravity is going to be pulling the crystals together so Makes tight sense. that you're going to need something really strong to get through that layer of bedrock. It also explains why the mountains of Minecraft are so small. I finally found one that's almost at the max height for mountains, and it's like basically just a big freaking hill. It's really yeah. not even a mountain. Mountains cannot get much bigger because gravity is going to be pulling them down really, really hard. It's difficult to be a one kilometer Sounds tall mountain me. when you're straining against gravity so freaking high that it makes Jupiter cry. So, yeah. um... Yeah! I think we can say without qualifiers that the world of Minecraft is actually totally plausible and internally consistent. That's kind of a... It's kind of amazing. I mean, you wouldn't want to go there as a human being. You'd almost certainly die under the force of gravity. And, um... How on earth are these islands oh. floating? I mean, I love them, but but how? How are they doing it? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Well, that was something that we learned. You can go watch more by clicking one of these right now. Hurry and click one. Hurry. You don't even know what's going to happen to me. Click it now. Ah!